Have you ever experienced life on a farm? If you have, you know it can be dicey. Gambling your livelihood with mother nature, not unlike sailing. If you haven't, you might want to learn a thing or two about what it takes to feed the world from one family's perspective, my family's. Our neighbor, Mike Wilson, who has lived here his whole life, was adamant that you should get to see the beauty that this little corner of the world has to offer. The Palouse Hills of Whitman County, the largest wheat producing county in the nation. So we're trying to cut a sample to see if this barley is dry enough to cut. That's what we're doing today, this afternoon. Finally hasn't rained for four or five days. So we're gonna try to see if they will take the barley in town. We just gotta cut a little bit and take it into town and they'll moisture test it to see if they can store it safely. It has to be below 13% today. Normally it's 12% but they're going to allow us at 13 because of all the rain delays we've been having and there's lots of people in the same boat as me nearly the middle of September and not done cutting and it's frustrating and frightening at the same time. So we'll see how this goes. What was it tested at the last time? We tested two days ago and it was 16.4. So I'm not not overly optimistic that this is going to test okay and the weather forecast says there's more rain coming on Sunday so not really sure what the heck to do here I haven't been in this boat like ever I've known people that are in this boat but not me everything was just so late this year it took a long time to get everything ripe and when we finally did we had more rain delays and more breakdowns and it's been slow. Yeah, probably five, I'd say four to five major breakdowns. Yeah, at least. And all this rain, man. Yeah, we've been a lot of iron. <laughs> that, that walker, that was a good one. Never had that happen before. Broke one of the thrashing walkers in the back of the combine. It's about a 16 foot piece of metal. Broke it right in half. So we had to remove the old one and install another one that I got from a neighbor. I used one because it was super cheap compared to a brand new one. But that's, I shouldn't say I've never done that before, but never on this combine and never just metal fatigue. When I did it before, I did it because I plugged it with Russian pistols. But this time was just fatigue. This combine's got a lot of hours on it. So things like that are gonna happen. I'm not really sure what it's yielding, but I think it's going to be one of my better yielding crops. But it's not going to matter if I can't get it cut and get it into town before it's ruined due to moisture. I mean, it can sprout, and like I was talking to the grain broker today, and his buyers don't want it to have a yellow color to it. They want it bright white, which means, you know, really good, no rain. Uh, so you know you got to you got to appeal to the buyer. Yeah. So he's going to have to store this stuff separately if it doesn't have that bright white color to it. If it's kind of turning a little yellowish. And obviously me, as the farmer, will get discounted heartily on what I might sell it for because of the quality is just not there. Probably can't even really tell, you know. We talked earlier about what it would be like to videotape what it's like on these hills. I mean, can you give the viewers an idea of what? Yeah, we definitely intend to. Yeah, I want to get outside of it after this test, what happened. Got to be real careful, sucking dirt, see? Oh, yeah. It's easy to do. Yeah. I haven't been pushing it for very long, and now the dirt is wet. So, you know, if you push that through the combine, have some trouble. Is that a thumbs up I saw there? That was a thumbs up. 
We just took the sample in and we got some good news. The elevators will take it at 13% moisture and we tested 12.8. So we're good to go for the rest of the afternoon. Woo! That's huge. <laughs> Alright, he wants to cut down over there. I just gave him the all clear. Now I'm gonna go hop in the bank out wagon and follow him to another patch. Alright. In our neck of the woods, a typical harvest starts August 1st and wraps up in the first week of September. By now, we're normally done and waiting on paychecks, but this year it's the middle of September and we still have over 25% of the crop left to cut. Grain can only be cut and stored within a minimum range of moisture content. If the fall rains come early and stay, anything left in the field will be lost. This August has already been one of the wettest on record. This fact, combined with many untimely breakdowns, has put my dad into a do or die situation. Okay, we just got to the top of Am I on your video? Right Somewhere. Now? Yeah, do you want to be? No. So, yeah, on. you got to say hi. This oh, is, hi, I'm Mike. This is Mike, and yeah. Mike has been coming over for. Want a beer? <laughs> <laughs> Mike's been coming over trying to get me to come out. He wants to show me Whitman County, the best Whitman County has to offer. And we've been driving on dirt roads. We've been driving. I don't even know where we're at right now, but we just got to the top of the hill, so let's go check it out. You want to say anything? Yeah, we're, uh, we're on the fryer place. Shoot over there. Okay. Turn it around and shoot, shoot your rig over there. See that? See that big mountain over there? Uh, yeah. yeah that's Steptoe Butte. That's where we're going. That's where we're going to catch the sunset. Oh my now. God! So we're going to be all the way over there? Oh yeah, that's only about 15 miles away. Whoa! So when I was 18, it was time to go. I had to get out. I haven't looked back since. I've been traveling all over. I, I don't know what it was, but I didn't want to stay where I was at and I've just been traveling ever since. You have not, you have a totally different approach. Yeah. And why, Well, I don't what know. It's makes just, you just want to? It's just how you're raised and how you're, what you're exposed to as you're growing up and the things that you enjoy to do. And he's never wanted to leave home. He's, no, he's well, been there's here hunting and, here, there's fishing here, there's uh, buds here, there, you know, buddies, you know, and just, um, it's a great place to be. I, I, I just, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Whitman County, it is what it is. Oh, this is Brother Gary's crap. <laughs> school bus? I mean, what in the world? Well, we've got lots of school buses, so he does. Like, is anybody we got an ambulance what, what, too. What's going, is anyone using any of this stuff? Oh, yeah. Some of the school buses have uh, extra, machinery parts and things like that in them. Okay. Here's some more of uh, Brother Gary's crap. So what, what are we That's looking at? That's Brother Tim's crap. How many? That's Brother Tim's crap. Brother Tim. So we saw Brother Gary's crap, Brother Tim's crap. Okay. Where's your crap? I don't have any more crap. Oh. I've de myself over the years. I've been, a, I've been a minimalist for quite a few years. I don't have a lot of stuff. All yeah. the stuff that I ever had, you know, that I meant anything, you know, that from my father, my grandfather and stuff, I've given to my grandkids or, or brothers or, or something that way, uh, you know. Anyway. All right. There's Steptoe Butte. The state park's down here around the corner a little ways and we'll get up on top of it. Oh, right. Okay, this is Naff Ridge over here. They installed a whole bunch of wind chargers in here and uh, some of them, my relatives, they have uh, land that, uh, over by Oaksdale that uh, they sold out to these wind charger people. Wind, oh, I see him, okay. Uh, we're at uh, 3,612 feet. As you can see all around us, it's beautiful country. I mean, we're up here quite a ways and you're looking at a lot of Whitman County, state of Washington right now. Well, this is a sunset here. It's not as dynamic as uh, what Joel and Michael see on the ocean, I'm sure. But uh, it's usually a lot better than this. This is kind of a mediocre sunset, but uh, 
There it goes. It's going down below the hill. What do you got to say? There she goes. There she goes. No, I was just saying it does remind me of watching a sunset go down on the ocean. Just, just flat rolling hills. There's really, you know, no buildings or trees or anything in the way. It kind of does remind me of watching a sunset on the ocean, except for we're way up high and you could see for miles and miles, 70 miles, I think, for right now we can see. Easily. And I, I think that the sunset has actually looks better than what you can see on camera. I'm kind of seeing the screen, um, but it's red. It's, uh, it's nice. It's a great view. Let's uh, get us out of the way and check it out. Yeah. There she goes. I can zoom in a bit. Woo. Sure is red, lights up the sky. Yeah. Yeah, usually you know if there's clouds, a lot more clouds and they'll really orange up and they'll be orange for a long way. See how it's hitting the cloud now, but I mean it's like that's it's mediocre. This is a mediocre Whitman County steptoe sunset. <laughs> we'll take it. But we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we'll take the view. Look at that. Rolling hills. These are the tales of Boab.